In this episode, let's have a look at which lavalier microphone for less than $200 you preferred the sound of. Now, if you haven't checked out our previous episode where we did the blind comparison between these six mics, check that out and come on back and let's take a look. Now, before we jump in and talk about which mic you preferred the most, just a couple of notes. First of all, this is really subjective. So the purpose of this is not to say and identify one ultimate microphone. It's to get an idea of what a larger audience prefers the sound of, which mic. So it's again, it's not perfect. Everyone is entitled to their opinion. And again, it's subjective. So if your opinion differs from what everyone else voted for, that's okay. That's cool. You're unique totally fine and there's <laughs> not a problem with it but i was curious about which mic you know the majority of people prefer the sound of so let's take a look now in terms of recording there were three mics that had xlr inputs and three mics that had 3.5 millimeter inputs in the case of the xlr mics i recorded each of those in the tascam dr60d and in the case of the 3.5 millimeter input mics those were each recorded into the zoom h1 in all cases except for one i recorded with the microphone on the outside of my clothes um, right here in the chest and you can see right here in each case with the mic capsule facing down now you might ask well why in the world did you do that the reason is I have a very sibilant voice a lot of sibilance in my voice and what that typically does is that helps mellow out some of that sibilance a little bit so if you have someone that you're working with that has a darker voice you probably wouldn't want to do that you'd probably want to face the mic up um, but for someone that has a little bit more sibilance in their voice like myself, pointing it down helps to mellow that out just a little bit. All right, the time I put this video together, we had 60 votes for different microphones. And let's review which ones you guys preferred the most. The most popular microphone by just a little bit of a margin, 40% of the overall votes, was the Audio-Technica AT899. Now this is an XLR-based mic. I've reviewed this in the past. It is my personal favorite of these mics, but it's not all rosy. There are some issues with this mic. First of all, this is the most expensive of the mics that were reviewed or compared. The build quality on the Audio-Technica AT899 is fantastic. The, it's held up very nicely for me. I have, have had it for about 18 months and it has really done well for me. It's still just like it was when I got it new. Um, it has, it's a very small, capsule so that's nice because it's a little easier to hide or be less imposing in the frame when you do have it worn on the outside of the clothes um, i think what people tend to like about this mic in terms of its sound is that it has a very nice rich low end and a fairly controlled high end as well you know the higher frequencies so it's a pretty nice balanced mic overall there are some downsides to this mic the first of them being that it has this battery thing, I'm not even sure, <laughs> um, that is actually pretty unwieldy. Now, if they had just made it like most lavalier battery packs or transmitters, where it's sort of a squarish thing that you could clip to your belt, I think that would have been a lot better. For, for some reason, I think they were trying to make it less imposing in some way, but the problem is, is that the mic um, or the battery compartment doesn't come with a belt clip, first of all. And secondly, the cable sticks out the long end of it, so it makes it an even longer thing, and it's hard to stick that into a pocket. So um, those are some downsides. Is, it, does that, is that a deal breaker? That really depends on you and whether or not you can work that way. Um, some people don't like that, and it's just too much, too cumbersome. I find that this mic is, n there are times when I find that I don't go to this mic because it is a kind of a pain to work with from that standpoint. But the sound quality, from my point of view, is the top of, of the six that we listen to here. My personal preference, that doesn't mean it's the best, doesn't mean you should like it, just my personal preference. Second place was the HMN Sound Microlav. Now, this is one that I have not reviewed, and the reason I haven't reviewed it is that Thomas over at HMN Sound is still sort of tweaking this one a little bit. Um, this it does have an XLR input in the particular model that I got. You can also get it with connectors to go into LAV or wireless systems like Sennheiser, Sony, and what have you. Now, a lot of you, I think, indicated that you like this mic. And for those of you, the many people actually indicated that they like this mic, except that it sounded very, very sibilant. And that is to say that when, uh, when I said the letters S and T and um, some of those other C, um, it had a very sizzly kind of uh, audibly grating sound. And in fact, I agree with that. That really is kind of the case <laughs> for my voice on a lot of mics. 
because kind of the modern trend is to make mics that have this very, very sensitive top end. Um, just because the technology, I think because the technology is there partly and people have in, in some cases grown accustomed to that sound. And indeed that works pretty well on a lot of people's voices. On my particular voice it doesn't work well and so um, I think what people liked was it had a nice rich low end on this mic um, but they were a little, um, they didn't love the fact that it was very sibilant. Now what I find on this mic is that if I'm recording myself I find that this mic works pretty nicely if I wear it under the first layer of clothing under my shirt and that tends to mellow out a lot of that sibilance and in that case it works really nicely. It could also work nicely for someone that has a very dark voice that is to say someone that doesn't have a lot of top end to their voice and could help to bring out a little bit more of the richness of their overall frequency of their voice. In terms of noise, um, all these mics had some noise and that's you know we're dealing in the in the kind of the sub-professional range so you're going to get some of that for the most part. Okay moving on down to third place in this case it was our beloved Giant Squid Audio Labs Omnidirectional Mono Lav Mic. This is a 3.5 millimeter input mic. This is a $40, $45 US mic. It's a great buy if you are on a tighter budget. Um, a lot of people like the sound of this one as well. So while the AT899 got 40% of the vote, HMN Sound got 30% of the vote, the Giant Squid got 12% of the vote. So there's actually a fairly large margin between those two, but again, on a budget, this is a pretty great sounding mic. Build quality is pretty good. The one um, kind of downside that I think a lot of people run into with this mic, after I made my recommendation a while back, it is a boutique mic. That is to say, it's a guy that designed it, and at first he was building them. Now he actually has a factory that's making them. But it's a really small operation. I don't think there's any sort of formal warranty. So the customer service hasn't been top notch. However, if you're, if you're not in a hurry, I think it's a great mic and you can usually get it. I haven't had any problems with my mics. Um, some other people have expressed, some small number of people have expressed issues in terms of customer service. One person got theirs, it wasn't working out of the box. It took a couple months. Um, and finally they had to cash in on their PayPal buyer protection to, to, to get the issue resolved. So it's not perfect, but it is a good mic. And then moving on from there, fourth place was the Rode SmartLav Plus. Now this is not the original SmartLav, this is the SmartLav Plus. This is about an $80 US mic. It is uh, one that records natively into an iPhone or into most com modern computers, like stuff that's built in the last couple of years. And um, I, I really like this mic actually. I think it's a pretty good one for recording into your phone if you need that convenience. I think it sounds all right. Out of the recorder, it sounds a little thin to me. I agree, most of you also indicated that it sounds a little bit thin. It's not your favorite sounding mic, but with a little bit of EQ, you can definitely make it sing pretty nicely on most voices. What I like about it is that um, it's very, very quiet. This was probably the quietest of the six mics in terms of self noise, the noise that the mics themselves produce. And so that's a really nice feature. They've really done a nice job cleaning that up from the first version of this mic. If you're going to spend your money on a Rode SmartLav, do not get the original version. Definitely get the SmartLav Plus. I think you'd just be disappointed with the original version. Now, fifth place was our uh, long time, probably actually it was my first lavalier mic, was the Audio-Technica ATR3350. This is a pretty good mic as well. It's got some issues. Um, overall, it sounds pretty nice, but it does have, uh, and it actually has some, some things that make it a stronger contender. If you're on a very tight budget, this is a $20 to $25 US mic. The newest version, the 3350 IS, actually allows you to plug it into an audio recorder like a Zoom H1, which is what we did here, or you can also use the adapter that it comes with and plug it into your smartphone. So you've got a lot of options there. It's got a very long cable. It is a um, five meter cable, I think, somewhere around there, 20 feet-ish. And so what that means is you can plug directly into your camera if you don't have an audio recorder. So you're not gonna get as good a sound that way because of the poor quality of most camera preamps. However, it is very convenient, and if it's your first mic, I think it's a great start. And finally, the Audio-Technica Pro 70. This is not, <laughs> nobody liked this mic for the most, well, I take that back. There were a couple of people that liked it. This is a special purpose mic, and to be honest, I never use this for recording dialogue for film. I use this actually, and, and actually I, I thought I would, but I ended up not, because I don't like the sound of it that much for dialogue. However, it is a good mic, it does have its place, it is an XLR input mic. It is, um, comes with a battery pack that is in the kind of a square format that you can hook to your belt. 
Um, it's cardioid. It's the only one of them that is cardioid. And this is the only one that I actually recorded with it facing up toward my face. Overall, the sound quality is okay. You have to do some a fair bit of EQ to get it sounding really nice for dialogue. Um, but what I do find is it's very good for uh, miking instruments. I actually have a special arm that I can connect it to and hook it to my wife's violin. And it works great. Record, and actually, not so much for recording. I use it mainly for live performances. And when I work with the sound guys at the venues, they're always really happy with it and uh, are really grateful to work with someone that knows how to, to get it all rigged up and, and working nicely. And then all they have to do is manage the levels and mix it. So it's a very nice mic for that purpose. It can also be useful for recording dialogue in very noisy places. So if I'm talking like jet engines, helicopters, um, you know, really loud industrial noise, in those cases, it might be better to use a cardioid mic because at least you're going to get more signal versus noise. Um, it's not going to necessarily sound awesome, but it's going to sound better than it would if you were using an omnidirectional mic. So here's the thing to remember. For, for lavalier mics, you're typically going to want to use an omnidirectional unless you have a special case. So that's a question I've gotten a lot. I hope that's helpful for you to understand the difference. Lavalier mics just tend not to send as, sound as rich when they're cardioid pickup patterns. So definitely I would go generally with an omnidirectional, at least start there. Just in summary here, again, this is all very subjective. So if you disagree with any of the voting that took place here, that's okay. That's perfectly fine. Get the mic that sounds best to you. Another thing to keep in mind, different mics sound better or worse on different people. So there could be a mic that doesn't necessarily sound great on one person, but sounds really, really nice on another person. So that's another thing to keep in mind. It's not a Perfect. It's not, you know, just a matter of choosing which one sounds best by listening to one person's voice. So you need to go out and do your research there. You know, what I would recommend, again, I really find the Audio-Technica AT899 works really well on a lot of people's voices. If you don't have the budget for that, there are some other options here that also sound good. In fact, a few people just commented, I can't choose a favorite because they all sound really good, but they just sound a little bit different. And, and I think that really is the case. You can get a good sound out of any of these mics that we've talked about here today. Now, if I had to choose a favorite again, I would I typically will use the AT899 if I have to use a lavalier. And if I don't want the hassle of, you know, the this battery thing, <laughs> I don't even know what to call it. It's a battery thing. Um, if I don't want that, that uh, grief, I actually will either use the Rode SmartLav Plus or the Giant Squid Audio Labs, depending on whether or not I'm going to be giving this to somebody, you know, or recording myself. If I'm recording myself, I'll use the SmartLav Plus. I trust myself with my phone. Um, you know, if I'm miking up a groom at a wedding or something like that, or um, you know, having someone that's going to be walking around, I'll give them the Zoom H1 and the Giant Squid, just because that way they don't have the, you know, they don't have my phone. They're not going to get a call <laughs> while uh, we're trying to record the wedding. And uh, the Zoom H1 works great with the Giant Squid. So that those are my options. Take that for what it's worth. Again. That's subjective, that's my opinion. It's not necessarily the best for you, but that's what I typically do. Thanks again for checking out this episode. If you have any comments or input or questions, go ahead and leave those down below or visit us over at learnlightandsound.com. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that and we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk with you soon.